Okay, picking up from the last video, I'm now going to have a look at is there any interaction between the abdominal fat and gender. So interaction is something that we look at between factors. If you've only got one factor in your model then you don't need to look at interaction. Um, and for a student project if you're really not comfortable with the interaction and you're having difficulty interpreting it then you could also leave it out. Um, something that we might want to do first is an interaction plot to help us understand what is going on. And interactions in the statistical sense do work like drug interactions. So you might be wondering if you've already taken an aspirin for your headache, will the Panadol have a different effect than if you had not taken the aspirin? So does the fact that you've got one variable there change how the other responds? And this is probably easier to look at with a graph. Now this probably a few ways you can get out this graph but the easiest one is go back to the stat menu not the graph menu and in your ANOVA tab you've got this interaction plot. So to explain the difference I could probably do the main effects plot first and this looks at the effect of each of the variables by themselves. So the response is cholesterol and the factors are gender and ab fat. So what we've got here is that on average, and remember these dots are just averages, the females are having a lower cholesterol than the men. I generally, I don't think I would ever use this main effects plot as is because if you're just looking at the one variable I think it's better to put the confidence interval on it so that you can see if it's um, statistically significant. But in comparison for the interaction it's probably a good idea to look at it. And then we've got this on average the people with the low abdominal fat have a lower cholesterol than the people with the sum or the severe abdominal fat. And we already know that this is um, statistically significant because we ran that model before. Now we're also interested in, in the size of the effect and here that's where we would look at the y-axis here. So it's saying that the women on average have got a cholesterol of around 5.75 and the men have got a cholesterol on average around um, I don't know 5.95. So that's not a huge difference. Um, the difference between the low cholesterol at about 5.4 and the high cholesterol at 6.2 that's probably a, a bit more um, clinically important. These are just the main effects without adjusting for the other variables. So you do have to interpret them with caution. So we haven't adjusted for weight here. And that's why, even though when we ran the model, it's probably worth pointing out that we actually had the, the sum abdominal fat was actually getting a little adjustment upwards from the severe abdominal fat, which was odd, but then I don't really have a medical background. Um, but that was after adjusting for weight, so it's possible that adjusting for weight has some effect here. So I will minimize that down. So that's the main effects. So main effects means looking at just one variable at a time. The interaction effect is looking at them both together. So if I pull out the interaction plot now, um, don't worry about the interaction plot matrix, we'll just leave it, just do two at a time so you don't get confused. Now the way it looks will depend on which, oh, it's flicking again, on, when, on which order you put these variables in. There's no right or wrong, it's just what is easier to interpret. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to pull that plot up again and I'm going to take add fat from there and I'm going to stick it before gender. So now it's going to do the plot the other way around. So just to have a quick look at these side by side, where's my other one gone? There. So we've got, this one has got abdominal fat on the x-axis and then it's got separate lines for the gender and this is done it the other way around. It's got gender on the um, x-axis and then separate lines for the abdominal fat. The best way to do this will depend on what you're trying to say and what your data is about. There is absolutely no right or wrong. Um, personally in this particular case I think I prefer the first plot where we've got a separate line for each gender. So we would interpret this as for women with the blue dot 
um, with the low abdominal fat they have the lower cholesterol which then goes up for the sum and then the severe. For the men they start off a little bit higher in cholesterol and we knew that already that men on average had the higher cholesterol but they actually seem to be getting more of an increase than the women. If they if abdominal fat was having the same effect we would expect the male line to follow the female line and to have um, and always be just that little bit higher just a little bit higher just a little bit higher but actually what's happening is that it's going up way more for the sum and then we've got this huge difference between um, the severe abdominal fat and the genders so this is suggesting that there might be some interaction we do need to test to see if it's statistically significant possible that you can see an interaction in the graph but it's, it's not significant. So to run that model we'll go back to our general linear model general linear and we will need to go into our model options I believe it's been a little while since I used Minitab I think you can add it in here yourself if you just put the two terms in with a multiply sign but if you go into model it will use the word interaction so when you're getting started this might be easier so if you just select gender um, I'm holding down shift and selecting add that at the same time interactions through order just leave it at 2 and click add and you can see here that it's in, added in this gender star abdominal fat so that's the interaction term now I think you actually could just type that in there and it would do it as well and the graphs will stay the same. So you can see that our residual plots have actually changed a little bit and they the p-values and the residuals will change with every model that you do. They're still looking fairly random, there's no increase or decrease in variance, there's no evidence of a curve. Um, oh, maybe very faintly there but that doesn't look too severe. There's a little bit of a wiggle here. Um, the residuals are looking fairly normal now this one is a little bit away from the others but there's nothing going less than minus 3 or greater than positive 3 so I'm not overly worried about that it's more likely that this has come about through um, only having a small data set so I'm okay with those residuals let's go to the model and we can see now that we've still got our weight gender ab fat and then we've got this new line here so the null hypothesis is that there is no interaction once these other variables have been adjusted for we've got very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and therefore it does appear that abdominal fat is having a different effect depending on your gender and interpreting that will be easiest with the graphs rather than looking at the parameter estimates so it's saying that if you're male then having abdominal fat appears to be more dangerous in terms of your cholesterol than if you are female it's having a greater effect there um, the R squared has gone up a tiny bit since the last model and here we've got the the interaction terms if you actually wanted to build them out and it's given some examples of the regression equations I do feel at this stage it's probably easiest if you look at the p-values and then use the graphs to help you interpret it. Um, so perhaps in the next video I'll take a very quick look at running the whole thing again with the, um, with the ball data.